Hey everyone, welcome to another Possum University Small Bite. On this episode, we're going to discuss periodontal disease. What is it, what causes it, and what you can do to prevent it from happening to your dog. So if you follow us on Instagram, at Possum University, and if you don't, you probably should, you saw that we posted the PU fact of the day, and it was about periodontal disease and how rampant it is in our canine population. So you might be wondering, what is periodontal disease? It's essentially an infection of the tissues, which would be gum and bone, that hold the teeth in place. It's the same exact periodontal disease that humans can get. So just like us, the bacteria in a dog's mouth forms plaque, which sticks to the surface of the teeth, and then the minerals in their saliva will harden the plaque into dental calculus, which we know as tartar, and that is firmly attached to the teeth. Every dog with teeth is susceptible to periodontal disease, but it tends to be particularly prevalent in smaller breeds. I'm sure you've seen that a lot. If you ever see chihuahuas, Especially older, old chihuahuas, their teeth are usually pretty jacked up, especially if you work in an animal shelter and you'll see them come in as a stray or be surrendered. They usually have the nastiest teeth you've ever seen on a dog. The thing about smaller dogs is their smaller teeth can trap traces of food way more easily and the accumulation of food between the teeth mixed with the saliva and bacteria turn into dental plaque and tartar really fast. Smaller breeds also have way less bone mass anchoring each tooth in so tooth loss is way more prevalent in smaller breeds. So you may be wondering, this is so prevalent in dogs, what's stopping my dog from being at risk of it? The key here is to catch it early. Periodontal disease can be broken down into four stages. Stage one, slight swelling, redness, the gums, gingivitis, and usually some visible accumulation of tartar. The good news is if your dog has this, this is probably the most common stage. There's no loss of the tooth support, so as long as you address it quickly with your veterinarian, everything should be fine and you should be able to reverse it. Stage 2 is early periodontitis. It's diagnosed when there is mild or moderate loss of the bone and ligaments that hold the teeth in place. At this stage, the gums are redder and are way more inflamed. Next up, stage 3, moderate periodontitis. is diagnosed when up to 50% of the tooth support is lost. And what's interesting is during stages 2 and 3, the teeth look the same. There's no visible difference above the gum line. Stage 3 is usually diagnosed with an x-ray to show the greater loss of the bone. And then stage 4, obviously advanced periodontitis indicates bone loss of 50% or greater. During this last stage, tartar is really apparent. Um, You're definitely not missing it. This is usually that brown, maroon, nasty stuff that's building up at the base of the tooth and sometimes coming over the the entire crown and uh, just encapsulating the tooth. In my days in law enforcement, when we would see neglect, there were times where we would see tartar that was thicker than the tooth itself. And it would literally be like a a rock stuck to the tooth. It's absolutely insane how bad tartar can get. Obviously, when you get to stage four, tartar is very apparent. Like I said, gums are retracted and the teeth are significantly damaged. Most of the time, stage four teeth need to be extracted. So that all sounds awful. Let's talk about prevention. A common misconception, and Jamie and I have made this mistake before because it makes sense in your head, but... uh. When you dig a little deeper into the research and you see studies have been done on this, common misconception is that dry kibble is an effective solution to cleaning your dog's teeth. Unfortunately, that's not the case. While kibble can remove the plaque from the tops of the teeth, it doesn't do much for the critical spot, which is the gum line. So bacteria is getting in at the gum line. It's an infection in the gum and the bone. So the tops of the teeth is all great, but you need to address that critical area in the gums. On top of that, A lot of dry kibble that's out there is absolute crap. And I know we haven't done a full episode on this yet, and we will. And we do have a recommended dog food product page. You can head over to possumuniversity.com to find that. But a lot of this lower quality, crappy dog food is very carbohydrate dense. And higher carbohydrates will lead to more rapid plaque buildup. So really, it could be doing more harm than good. That's why it's really important to get your dog in a high quality dog food. So if kibble's not enough, what can I do? We always recommend to our clients, give enrichment specially designed for teeth cleaning. Most of you know we have a little chihuahua named Pudge, and we do our very best to stop her mouth from smelling like the harbor. So she gets a greenie every day, sometimes twice a day, and they're specially formulated with abrasive particles that really help with cleaning her teeth and keeping them not smelling awful. Our favorite vet in the world, Dr. Mammon, explained to us that even though her teeth are white, That odor could be coming from under the gums. So it's really important to make sure that we take care of the tartar and plaque buildup that gets to the gum line before it becomes a much bigger issue. So we've been giving her those for probably about a year now and her teeth have improved and her stinky breath has improved and it's a a small price to pay and she loves them. That's her favorite thing, her favorite treat in the world. 
So we use greenies. There's dentist sticks out there. She didn't like the dentist sticks as much. Greenies really her thing, especially the blueberry flavor. On top of that, you could also utilize hard toy bones like Nyla bones. Um, and then you can stuff marrow bones. As long as they're chewing on those for a decent amount of time, they can really get a lot of the tartar, especially from the back. They're using their back teeth when they're chewing these bones. You could really scrape a lot of the tartar off towards the gum line. So hard toys, hard bones really help keep their teeth clean. However, and unfortunately, the most effective and scientifically proven way to keep your dog's teeth clean and prevent periodontal disease is to brush. I know. The VCA animal hospitals recommend at least three days a week, but in a perfect world, twice a day, just like us. Make sure to use toothpaste formulator for your dogs. So they have peanut butter flavor, cheddar flavor. You can find anything, whatever, you, whatever your dog prefers. I'm sure they make a flavor of it. And what's different about dog toothpaste from ours is that it's enzymatic. So it contains enzymes that break down the tartar. So it's not so much about scrubbing them clean, although you do want to focus on those bad areas. It's about the enzymes getting that toothpaste just on there. Brush after brush, it'll start to compound and it'll make a difference. And as always, like we always preach, keep it a positive experience. That could be a very vulnerable experience for a dog. So if it's their first time, some tips, make it a routine. Do it when they're calm. Make sure, as always, you're praising during, especially if they're uncomfortable. We always like to test the dog's willingness to have their teeth brushed by lifting their jowls and then just rubbing a finger along their teeth and the gum line. See if they're receptive to it, if they're uncomfortable by it. If they have early or mid-periodontal disease that you can't immediately see, you could be causing them a little discomfort. So if you think that's the case, always talk to your vet first. Engage their anxiety. Don't proceed if they seem really stressed out by this experience. Next, you could have them taste the toothpaste so that curiosity doesn't get to them and they don't allow you to actually brush their teeth. Let them taste it. Let them see what it's about. And then, like I said earlier, don't brush hard. Let the enzymes in the toothpaste do all the work. Now is a pretty good time to actually assess your dog's teeth. Get a look in their mouth while you're brushing it. And you're checking for that stage one stuff. Slight swelling and redness of the gums. Visible accumulation of tartar. Check for that stuff now and then make it a routine to check for it because the earlier you catch it, the higher success rate treatment is. And just like humans, bleeding gums can mean early gum disease. So if you start to see that and you don't think you're brushing too hard, that's also something you're going to want to mention to your vet. And then, of course, when it's all said and done, treat for a job well done. And I have to throw this in here. Heed your dog's warnings. Growling, fear, anxiety. If they seem super uncomfortable, they don't let you actually lift their gum. They push your head away. And then never brush the teeth of a dog that you don't know well. You're in a very vulnerable position for the both of you, and you are in perfect proximity for a bite, especially your face. So if you're not familiar with the dog, you're not comfortable with the dog, you're getting bad vibes from the dog, you should probably listen to them and leave it be. And if you just adopted, I've seen this before, where dogs are pent up in a shelter, they finally get adopted, they go home, and the first week, the new owners either want to clip their nails or brush their teeth you need to give these dogs if they're freshly adopted give them some time to decompress we usually recommend like six to eight weeks of decompression let them get acquainted with you let them understand a new routine six to eight weeks of not brushing your dog's teeth is not the end of the world especially because i promise you if they were adopted and their past wasn't great this is probably the first time they're ever getting their teeth brushed and then of course Worst case, there are dogs out there that will never let you brush your teeth. They're just too uncomfortable with it. You can always discuss with your veterinarian regular dental cleanings where they'll be sedated and their teeth will be cleaned to entirety. And you could do that at regular intervals to make sure that you keep periodontal disease at bay. And it's important to note from a behavior standpoint, we've seen sedation-free teeth cleanings before and we do not recommend them. Sedation-free could be very stressful. Like I said earlier, it's a very vulnerable position for your dog to be in. And then when you're talking about sedation-free, usually the dog is going to be strapped down or confined in some way with the help of uh, maybe a vet tech holding them down. And the scraping is very uncomfortable and it's just not really a procedure that I see is necessary to do without the sedation. So to save your dog from a very traumatic experience that can maybe in the future lead to issues with them allowing their mouth to be touched, we recommend going the sedation route. That's all we have for this small bite episode, periodontal disease. And thank you to Small Door Veterinary and VCA Animal Hospitals. Hope you liked it. If you did, rate this podcast five stars if you haven't already. I've been asking you for two seasons now, so do it. Now's the time. Go rate it five stars, give us a review, subscribe, share with a friend, and follow us on all of our social media platforms at Paulson University. 
Until next week, class dismissed.